Um, I'm, guys, I'm super excited about this year. I will tell you why very shortly. But I just want to highlight a couple of things that we're going to change within the evening services before I get started. Um, so for the first time in a while, we're going to do some themes for our speaking. So instead of just letting people go loose whenever they come up here and talk about whatever they want, we're going to start talking about some things and hopefully build towards some conclusions based on some topics. So today I'm doing my own thing because I get to do what I want. <laughs> Next week's encounter. And then following that, we're going to do a series which we're calling Peace or Panic. Okay, so it's about peace. And we've got three fantastic speakers who are going to be talking on that. You'll have to come and find out who they are. Um, I'm not going to tell you now. One guy I can't remember, and two, I don't want to spoil the surprise. So make sure you come to that. I'm really excited about doing this because um, we're, we're trying to match a little bit more of what the morning services are doing. We're trying to be a little bit more um, open about... Um, the things that we're doing as well. So I want you to know that we are going to be going somewhere. I want you to know that we're talking about specific things, right? The second thing that we're going to change in our evening services is what I'm calling an equip spot. So previously, you may know that we've done testimonies uh, in most of our services, um, and that's kind of fallen by the wayside in the last three or four months. So we're bringing it back, but we're bringing it back in a different way. So it's not just going to be, this has happened to me in the last week, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and it's not just going to be, I feel God has done this really well in my life. It's going to be one of a number of different things. So it can be that, definitely be a testimony. Always happy to hear testimony. But it might be something that God has been speaking to you about over a longer period of time. Maybe it might be something that, you know, you've been thinking about. There might be a verse that just keeps cropping up and, and you're just figuring out what it means to you. It might be something a bit more. You may want to bring something specific like a song or a poem. It just, what we want to do with this spot is give a few more people an opportunity to get up and share a bit of their heart. Now, we are going to limit it in terms of time, so you don't get to come up here and preach for 20 minutes. You will be only getting two to three minutes max, absolute max. There will be a klaxon. We're going to, you know, we're, we're going to try and stick to time on that because we don't want it to overtake what's going on elsewhere in the service. But I really want to hear from more people in the service. And I think the rest of us do as well because things are going on in your life. We all know it. So come up and tell us about it. Um, those are just a couple of things. If you do want to do that, come and have a chat to me. We'll slot you in. We're going to do it every second week. So it's not going to be every week. Um, so if you do want to get involved with that, let me know. Have a chat to one of the other guys, the familiar faces who you see all the time, and we'll get you into that, all right? Great. Great. Now I can start. I'm going to pray. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much for your presence in this building. We thank you for your presence in our lives, God. I just, I'm really excited about, um, about today. I'm really excited about tonight and, and the message that I'm bringing, God. And I just pray that, that you'll, you'll help me to speak your words, not mine. Help me to channel my excitement for these guys to understand what you want. God, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I'm talking about expectation today. So it's the first day of the month. I've titled this, What Did You Expect? So this time of the year, We've all drawn a line in the sand, and that line in the sand may mean a different thing for each of us, but we've all definitely done it. We've all decided that 2017 is over, and everything that we've held close in that year, all of our dreams for that year, they're gone. It's in the past. We've drawn a line in the sand behind us. And many of us will have thought about what we want to do this year. Now, whether you've done that formally with a resolution, or whether you've just thought about, I'd like to do this. We've all done it. We may have thought about our work goals, family or relationship that needs to be developed or improved. You may have thought about shifting a few pounds after that Christmas feast, enacting a, a routine of self-improvement. You may want to do a year of spiritual development. You may want to read your Bible better. But we've all thought about doing something different this year. And I'm betting right now, within the last 30 seconds, you have thought about that one thing. Whether you realise that's something you wanted to change or not, you've already thought about it. So we all have goals, and it's good to do so. It gives us a focus to our actions, 
And it is good to expect something of ourselves. We put pressure on ourselves to achieve the things we want to achieve, right? We need to live up to our own expectations. Because otherwise we feel like things are a bit of a waste. And so we stand between one line behind us and one line 358 days in the future. And what happens between comes down to us. And there's some pressure in that. Because no one wants to just drift along. We all want to do something of significance this year. We put pressure on ourselves to matter and to achieve. And we expect of ourselves. Now, if there's one person in the Bible who knew a thing or two about expectation and pressure, it might well be our dear friend Joshua. As we know, Joshua succeeded Moses, probably the greatest tribal leader in Israelite history. It's a bit of pressure. Then there's the fact that the 12 tribes have been wandering around the desert for 40 years under Moses' leadership, and the people are restless. They're ready for a change. There's a bit of expectation there, right? Then there's the fact that Joshua has been Moses' understudy for some time. He's well known to the people as a number two. And Joshua's lost his mentor. He no longer has that guidance to fall back on. There's a pressure to achieve and there's a pressure to matter. Consider the fact that the routine of life in the wilderness dies with Moses as well. Israel expects something to change. God expects something to change. And finally, right in front of him, there's a fast, free-flowing river. And Joshua stands on the banks of the River Jordan. He could literally draw a line behind him and look towards what the future will bring. And maybe a miracle might just be required. So the fate of a nation falls on Joshua's shoulders, the expectation of a generation who has wandered, a tribe restless for change. Joshua stands on the banks of the River Jordan and delivers this response in Joshua 3.5 to all the pressure and everything that's coming down on him. He says, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things amongst you. Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Take a minute. Get ready. Prepare in front of the Lord. Because he is ready to do amazing things amongst you. Wow. What an incredible response to some pressure. There's a couple of lessons that we can learn from this from Joshua that can help us and show us how to move forwards into our year and reach our goals for this year. Firstly, we can learn that we don't have to be defined by our previous failures. And secondly, we can stand the pressure of a bigger vision. So Joshua was part of a broken nation who had failed to live up to the expectations of God. Their fear had denied them access to the promised land 40 years previously. They had failed countless times since leaving Egypt. But God still wanted to take them forwards. He still wanted to take them into the promised land. He still wants to take you forward. Don't worry about what's happened behind you. He still wants to take you forwards. And it can be hard when you've been dogged by failure not to see yourself in that light is something that we all relate to. We dwell on the times when we're not good enough, when we've failed, we haven't reached the standard. It's so easy to do. We're actually hardwired to do so in our brain. We reflect really heavily on the times that we do not succeed over the times when we are victorious. We dwell on our negative experiences because they're platforms for learning and survival, but defeat can swallow you up. Pain can stop you from moving forwards and setbacks stall the dream. But let me tell you something. You are not your mistakes. You are not defined by your previous failures. And you can learn from your mistakes. You can be successful again. 
You're not your mistakes. You can be successful again if you choose to be. In the desert, the Israelites couldn't cope with a bigger vision, but Joshua could. Joshua was about to undertake the biggest change in foreign policy that Israel had seen up till that point. It's probably changed now. And he also had the pressure of a group of people ready for something to change, and he handled it. And so can you. But let's look at how. Okay. Joshua was intimate with God. Exodus 33 verse 11 tells us that when Moses left the tent holding the Ark of the Covenant, Joshua stayed behind in the presence of the Lord. He stayed and learnt from God who he was. And God gave him the strength. Handling the pressure is actually about sharing the burden as Joshua did. He shared his burden with God. Cast all your cares upon him. It's in First Peter. Share the load. You can stand the pressure when you share with God and rely on him. Let me tell you a little bit about what I'm expecting for this year because you've heard me ask you. Let me tell you, right? So I am expecting increase. Increase, increase, increase. That's what I'm expecting for this year. It's not what I'm hoping for. It's what I'm expecting. Increase in my walk with Jesus and time spent with him. Increase in the number of volunteers and the teams under my guidance. Increase in attendance to this service. We want to see this service double, triple, quadruple this year. Increase in the number of kids and youth we're reaching the gospel with in all of our programs from Sunday through to Friday and Saturday. Increase in friends and depth of relationship. I'm in a hurry to see the gospel shared in this town. I don't want to waste any more time. We're not here to waste time. I want to be real with you and get down to business. I'm not interested in just doing the surface things. And I don't think you should be satisfied with that either. We're a family, so let's get to know each other like a family knows each other. Don't be satisfied with a surface, yeah, I'm fine. Let's get down to business. Let's do the nitty gritty. It's hard work, and it's hard work getting to know people, but it's worth it. Imagine if we all knew each other like a family knows each other. There'd be chaos, right? But it'd be great. It'd be wonderful. Imagine being in one of those big families. One of my wife's favorite movies, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, right? Massive family, huge chaos, but they all know each other so well. They put everything aside and come together, and it's beautiful. And it's a glorious mess, and that's what God's calling us to do. Now, I want to see real transformative change in the lives of this congregation and the people who surround us. For me, all of this, all of this increase, everything that I'm expecting for, is a huge leap of faith. And a huge step into the unknown. But this is what I dream of. And this is why I'm here. This is what I've been called to do. Which is terrifying, right? It's terrifying to know what you've been called to do and feel that pressure. But I'm not going to buckle under that pressure. I'm not going to fall because I know I can share my burden. There's a lot of pressure and there are failures in my past that could stop me. I have unsuccessfully done things like this before. I've run teams and not seen them grow. I've tried to instigate programs and not seen them be successful. I have failed before in ways that could stop me if I let them. But I refuse to be defined by these problems. And I know God has called me here. I refuse to buckle under the pressure and weight of expectation because I choose to share with God. And I know I can stand the pressure of this bigger vision. How about you? Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things amongst you. There's another thing we need to understand before we go out of this building, before we move into our goals, right? What has God promised us? He's promised us that we're not doing this in our own strength. We obviously need help in all aspects of our life. We obviously need God to guide us. We need Jesus for his sacrifice and example. 
We need the Holy Spirit for his intervening miraculous power. We need the Trinity as a whole to see our dreams come to fruition in the most positive way. God has promised to help us, which is fantastic news. He has promised to be with us always. He promised Joshua this, and he offers it to us in Isaiah 41. He promises to give generously to us, as he does in James 1. He promises redemption, and he promises that we are true heirs, sons and daughters. What right do we have to expect of God? We have the right because God tells us to. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouses that there may be food in my house. And test me on this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. So God promises us everything in heaven and then challenges himself to fulfill it. But we have to offer something first. We have to move first this verse talks about bringing part of ourselves bringing a tithe bringing a portion of who we are of what we are which we have to do before God will then give us everything we can't be stubborn and demand God's action in our lives when we refuse to take a step ourselves faith is not a freebie You have to step out yourself. You have to offer something of yourself. God requires us to offer something of ourselves if we want access to his power. Salvation is free. But true faith requires work and action. James 2 says, show me your faith without deeds and I will show you what my faith can do. So we have to do something. But we can expect God to move when we do. In fact, he longs to move with us and draw closer to us. Although we hold him at arm's length, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you'll seek me and you'll find me when you search with all your heart. So God is bringing us back. He's showering us with love. He's giving us the whole of heaven's resources at his disposal. He's calling us to fulfill our visions and dreams and he wants us to find meaning in him and in his plans. He wants us to take action. If only we would take the next step. If only we would dream bigger. If only we would do something and believe that he will do what he says. I don't always find it easy to take people at their word. And sometimes I need reassurance. But fortunately, the Bible is full of reassurance for us. Let's look back at Joshua. How many times is he told to be strong and courageous and that God will be with him before he even gets to the point where he says, consecrate yourselves? I don't know. There's a lot, though. Read it for yourself. I know that I can take God at his word because he has never let me down when I have moved. And he will be with me when I move to my goals this year. So because of this, We have to be ready. We have to be prepared to rely on God with our hopes, our dreams, and expectation. And that's the first step. Second step is actually living that out. We have to look at how we can change and prepare for God to move. Lately, I've been really challenged by uh, some stuff that Paul writes in the book of Philippians. Unlike most of his writing, Paul's not chastising the people who are receiving this. He's not telling them to grow up. He's not telling them to stop listening to those people and start listening to this or that they've ignored him, they've fallen away. It's one of the only times we see him really give an opportunity to share his heart. He's quite pleased with these guys, so he can tell them the truth. He can tell them how he really feels. Uh, Paul shows us how much of a change has happened in his life. It's, it's pretty incredible. Let me read it to you. This is a real glimpse into the intimacy that Paul has with God and the way that God has just totally rearranged his reason for being, right? So this is Philippians 3, 4 to, let's go down to 10. 
If others think they have reasons to put their confidence in flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day, the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regards to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, I was faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider a loss for the sake of Christ. What's more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him and not have a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes from faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on a basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his dead death. So Paul outlines who he was, right? He outlines who he was and how important he was and how perfect he was according to the law. And then how wrong he was to rely on that in his own strength, trying to achieve righteousness through the law. He worked so hard and then realized he had failed. However, Paul shows us that he doesn't be defined by that. He's not defined by that previous failure and he can stand the pressure that comes with a bigger vision. His preparation for God is to move into intimacy with him. Let's listen, go, we'll go a bit further and look at how passionate he is about being with God. Right? In verse 12 he says, not, only, not that I have already obtained this or have arrived at my goal, but I press on take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. Look forward, church. Don't be defined by your past. Be defined by your future in Christ. Let all of your goals all of your expectations be defined by your love of Jesus first and foremost. Look forwards and dream bigger and then see if he doesn't unleash all blessing in your life. God is making a way. God doesn't count your defeats. He gives us all of heaven's resources to use when we move with him. He is preparing our hearts for an increase unlike anything you've ever seen before. You know, it's incredible when God moves in a way that you, you weren't really expecting, even though you kind of hoped for it. So even today, even this evening, I wasn't expecting Fiona to talk about being trapped by your fears and having to let it go and move forward into something new. And I wasn't expecting John to talk about the newness that we're moving into. Yet here we are. And God is moving in this town and God is moving in our community in a way like he never has done before. And that's exciting. And it's terrifying. But it's the best place to be. This is the best place to be, folks. We're in a real situation where God is moving and showing his hand to us. He's tipping us off. He's showing us he's got pocket aces. He knows what's happening. It's going to be good. And I think you should be here for it. I think you should be here as much as you can for it because you're going to miss out otherwise. You don't want to miss out on God unleashing all blessing from heaven. You don't want to miss out on the floodgates of heaven being open. So be here. What can you do to be here? How can your dream grow bigger? What can you do to be ready? How can we be more like Joshua and more like Paul? So this week is our next steps week. Um, and it's, it's a great opportunity for you to start putting the things in place to reach what you want to reach. It's a great opportunity for you to take that step forwards. It's been designed to give you an opportunity to start off your foot, to start off on the right foot and push forward into further intimacy with God. We've got programs that you need to be a part of if you're not already. So there's connections on a Tuesday if you're not a partner in this church if you're not fully invested in this church come to connections and find out more about it 
there's base camp on Thursday if you want to discover what God desires for you in your ministry. Maybe for you it's as simple as getting along to the house group that you said you'd go to. Maybe it's as simple as opening your Bible and getting ready, starting to pray. Maybe it's as simple as going to Alpha on Thursday night if you've got some questions but you're not quite sure where to find the answers. We've got these yellow leaflets. Steph, can you just hold them up? for? If you want to make sure you're there, hold yourself accountable to going to one of those, I highly recommend filling them out. We're going to have them on the back table at the end. Um, but it's got all of the different things that we're doing this week. So fill it out and make sure you turn up. It's a great way of holding yourselves accountable because you can say to yourself, oh yeah, I'll do that. But if you actually write it down, you might just do it. Whatever it is this week, I urge you to take an opportunity to move forwards. I urge you to use this week to prepare for God to move you forward. So take a step this week and be prepared for God to show you a bigger dream. Know that you can handle the pressure. God doesn't define you by your past failures. He loves you immeasurably. Be like Paul forgetting what is behind and straining forwards towards what is ahead. Press on towards your goal to attain your prize. Consecrate yourselves. Get ready. Be ready for what God plans to do with you this year. Get prepared. Let's dream bigger. Let's be ready, folks. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for giving us dreams giving us hopes and expectations in our lives. God, I want to thank you that you don't just expect us to carry on. You want us to matter. You want us to achieve. I pray, God, that this community will know you and your will, that we will grow in intimacy with you over the next week and month and year. God, that it'll be just an incredible shift for us as a people to move forwards with you this year, God. We want to see increase in this community. We want to see more lives coming to know you. We want to see you move in this town at this time for these people, God. God, I just pray that everyone here takes some time this week to seek you out, to spend some time in intimacy with you and learn what you've got this week, this year for them, God. Amen. Amen.